So clearly I'm not a hydrogen specialist. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Kunal and uh, as you heard, the reason um, I've been called the ultimate networker recently is because I was privileged to be part of something called the Disruptor Innovation Awards at the Tribeca Film Festival. And there, my friend and I, Craig Hatkoff, uh, who's the founder of Tribeca Film, co-founder of Tribeca Film Festival, decided that we would create the network of networks. And in addition to that, we would curate the summit of summits. And uh, as you can see, we like to do a lot of X of Xs. So um, my life's journey uh, has largely been to make the impossible possible. It started with my mother having me, so I gave her a full-time job to make the impossible possible. And now I'm here to talk about hydrogen as a moonshot. Now let me tell you, I had no idea what the hell that meant. And this is the power of being a curator and I knew Chip. As soon as I saw that, oh, he's, I, I was like, oh, this is the power of what we have. We can just tell people what they need to speak about even if they don't know what the hell they're saying. <laughs> so I would like to shift that to where this started. It was actually last week where, uh, oh my God, not even, time flies. It was last month when we did SDG moonshots at the UN. We commemorated the 50th anniversary of man landing on the moon, which if you remember was one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. And the goal around that was really to create a new lens through which, how many of you know what the SDGs is, first and foremost? How many of you don't know what the SDGs are? Okay, so for all of you that don't know what the SDGs are, there's 17 global grand challenges that the UN came up with that we have tons of selfie moments with for the past five years. And we have tons of promises that have been made to save our Earth from the oceans to the moon, we've decided that we're going to make these 17 goals matter and we're gonna achieve them by 2030. So what I decided to do was to take something really bold and put it on the table when, does anyone remember, I'm sure some of you do, that moment when man landed on the moon? Right? What happened? I'd love for some of you to share your feeling when that happened in this country or even in any country, what, what was the feeling you had when we actually landed on the moon? Please, shout out. Excitement. Excitement. Uh, euphoria. euphoria. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Sorry? Get rid of poverty. Get rid of poverty. Did any of you experience unity? For the first time, did we ever stop seeing each other as Indian, African-American, African, white man, you know, Indian, American, something that I learned when I came here, which is like the uh, indigenous version of us Indians just born in America. Um, but my point is that I felt that this has to happen here and now. We have to make the SDGs mankind and womankind's ultimate moonshot on Earth. We have to use our collective intelligence to use the SDGs or approach the SDGs as we would rocket science, just like we did to land on the moon. Because I believe that if we do that, we will have a real shot over the next decade to actually make the impossible possible and usher in a whole new era of human pro prosperity and flourishing. So how do I think that that's gonna happen? I think that's largely gonna happen when man and woman unite. And I, that's a very hard thing for me to say as a man because I can't, I do not claim to be a feminist, just to be clear. I support women because women have supported me all my life. I do that because I grew up with a learning disability and I learned how to turn that disability into my greatest strength. And I did that because there was one mother that didn't give up on me since I was born. My dad gave up on me by the time I was eight. Then he didn't have a choice because my mom didn't let him give up on me for the next 41 years. So that was the math there. But the truth is, what I found most important was that I learned that when men and women unite, and this is something that I learned at home, when we truly unite, we can make the impossible possible. 
And with that, I'd like to share a small video, a small video that I, that I made for the SDG Moonshot Summit, which is my personal dream for, you know, I would say by 2024, which is very ambitious. And lo and behold, this is not, this is a true story. We launched at the Tribeca Film Festival and 10 days later, NASA came out with the exact same announcement. I'm not saying that NASA stole our idea. I might be suggesting that, but what I'm saying is that zeitgeist is in the air, right? The consciousness is now. And no better time has there been for us to create what I call a new knight's table. To not just give a woman a seat at the table, but truly give the woman the will, power, and the authority to support the ideas that can make the impossible possible. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So I want to talk about the next 20 years. And I want to say that I don't think any of us can fathom the transformation humanity is going to undergo in the next 20 years. is the most you can hope for in life? What is the most we can hope for for the planet? That human beings have as their birthright the right to more positive emotion, the right to more engagement, the right to better relationships, the right to a life of meaning and purpose, and to a life of achievement and accomplishment. The dream of Novus is to put the first woman on the moon. First Woman is a campaign that endeavors to put the first woman on the moon by 2024. And this is a historic opportunity for us to come together around solving for Earth's global grand challenges and creating a world where anything is possible. You know, 50 years ago, we would never have seen a CEO of a large company that was female. We would never have seen a female entrepreneur. We would have never seen uh, female innovators. It, you know, we've got young women that own patents that are 16 years old. That could have never happened 50 years ago. It's a huge achievement to show young girls out there that their world is theirs to conquer. Wow, uh, uh, a woman being on the moon, that's, that's huge. Um, Gosh, that's, uh, I think that's a game changer. To, I, I, you know, I, I think whenever you can show people what's possible, that opens up everything. Seeing a woman on the moon would be amazing for students because we look up to these people. That's what we see, we, that's who we want to be. And so having a woman do that, going to the moon, is a huge step for young girls looking, saying, that could be me. The reality is that everybody wants to change the world but nobody wants to change. The change starts with us. Our goal is to really democratize the idea of having men and women unite in action around not just putting a woman on the moon, but solving for all of our global grand challenges on Earth. So that is the really, the core of Novus is to truly come together and become go-givers and create massive transformative purpose driven leaders that can do anything and change everything. We're truly living during the most extraordinary time ever in human history. We are transforming what it means to be human. The question is, are you dreaming big enough? And so how do you empower yourself to dream bigger than ever before? Only as high as I reach can I grow. Only as far as I seek can I go. Only as deep as I look can I see, and only as much as I dream can I be. 
So please dream and dream big and make all of your dreams come true. So you guys are a small group that have got to see that and we're going to actually formally announce first woman at the UNGA next um, month uh, during UNGA week. I'm going to leave you guys with a couple of thoughts. One is, could you put up the slide again, please, the image that I had? Um, one is an invitation. So I'm not talking about hydrogen. I think you're going to get a mini MBA over the next three days on hydrogen and its technology and its resources and what we can do. I'm positing a different question over here. Is do we have a resource problem? Or do we have a leadership problem? That's what I ask myself every day. How can I lead into the future? Because God knows we have the intelligence, the innovation, and the resources to make anything happen. We've We've done it before with scraps. We're doing it today with extraordinary power plants. I don't think what's necessary here and now is a bunch of research. I think it's time for us to really look at ourselves as stewards of our planet. I believe that we have to come together as one, as one, no separation. I see in this room, it's very amazing. There are quite a few women in this room, but usually not so many in most rooms, most conferences are not as diverse as this, right? And I think that should become the norm. The norm should be where men and women are together without fear or favor. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should uh, be trite or try to incorporate something that's not true to ourselves, but I really believe that we should lead a life that's true to ourselves and be able to solve for these global grand challenges, whether it be climate change or like picking up a piece of trash on the floor. That's how civic engagement begins. And I feel that's where our responsibility lies as people on planet Earth right now. We need to make the impossible possible by starting from the oceans to the moon, by doing the smallest thing we can so that we can, we can reach that massive transformative purpose and have effective impact in our world. With that, I would invite you all to another summit that, of course, I have a summit disorder, just like Chip does. I just have to do another, even though I almost died during the last one. And so we thought about reimagining peace because this year is the year of climate change. It's climate week next month in the, in the UN. They are devoting it to two things, indigenous people and climate change. So that means a lot of energy guys and a lot of really interesting people that can bless our souls. And I would love for you guys to come to this. It's happening on the 21st in New York City as my guest, free of charge. Um, and the truth is we're going to make a very special announcement where we go from the idea which the UN has held so sacred all this time. I think they took it from the American Constitution and put an S there. We the people became we the peoples. And now I would dare us to go beyond we the people, we the peoples, and go to we the planet, where we make it something about something that's larger than ourselves, you know, so that we have inner transformation in order to have effective impact. And on that note, I want to thank you all for your time. I know I'm, I'm the one between you and a beautiful movie and dinner and drinks. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope uh, we can unite together in action to make the impossible possible. Thank you.